Hi, my name is Judy Van Coyman, and you're watching Life Issues. This month's show is about Safety Net, and my guests are Ralph Poland and Scooby Dorothy Wills. Welcome, both of you. Thank you. Glad to be here. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Ralph, mm -hmm. I'm going to start with you. Can you please tell us about your professional background? Uh, yes. Um, I started out in 1974 on the uh, Marshfield Police Department. Uh, I spent uh, uh, 14 years on the police department, and I did three years uh, crime scene investigation for Plymouth County Sheriff's Department. And I hit um, 65 years old in 2012, and they throw me out because of the, you know, mm. the uh, civil service age bracket. Okay, that's exciting. What? So, and Ralph, when was Sef Safety Net established? Um, it was it was established back in 2009, and it was originally part of LoJack um, for stolen cars. Mm -hmm. And as time went on, uh, the LoJack people figured, well, if we can find stolen cars, you know, with with radio frequency tracking, why not find missing people? Mm -hmm. So that's when it began. Mm -hmm. Okay. And where was it established? Uh, right in Canton, where Canton, Mass. was the main office. And the Boston Police uh, was the first uh, law enforcement agency to be involved with Safety Net um, uh, back in 2010, I believe it was. Okay, cool. Is it just in this area, in Massachusetts, or is it na national? No, it's national. We, we're in uh, 21 other states, okay. with uh, Massachusetts actually being full coverage anywhere in the state, even if a local police department or fire department or sheriff's department is not trained with it, mm -hmm. the Massachusetts State Police are. So anybody in the, the whole state of Massachusetts can go on this program. Okay, great. And what exactly is Safety Net Systems? Safety Net is uh, radio frequency tracking. It's not GPS or cell. Uh, and like I said, it's operated by hundreds of police and uh, fire and public safety agencies around the country. Um, we just opened up in British Columbia, Canada as well mm. this last cool. couple of months. And radio frequency will literally go through anything. Where GPS, I'm sure everybody knows, once in a while you can lose the signal mm -hmm. depending on where you are. Uh, and when you're looking for, you know, a five-year-old autistic child at three o'clock in the morning in February, you don't want to be able to have to lose the signal. Right. And the the average search for somebody on the safety net program uh, from the time they get reported missing is 30 minutes or less. Mm -hmm. And so far, uh, we've had over a thousand search and rescue calls for people on this around the country, and every one of them they found safe. Awesome. That's great. Yeah. Scooby, I'm going to switch over to you. When did you hear about Safety Net? Probably around 2010 when I had the situation with my daughter. And um, she unfortunately went missing and I couldn't find her. And when we did locate her, I tried to find a device that I thought could help her. And unfortunately, the one that I was looking at was only going to go 50 yards and it was um, a GPS, not a transmitter. Mm. So there was an incident where um, when she was found that it scared us enough that we had to find something. So I kept searching and searching and then I came across LoJack. And that's how I wound up having LoJack for Adrian. And I had to register her out of Norfolk with Bill Knight because they didn't have it here. And that was the closest place. So I had a sheriff come to my house once a month to change the battery mm -hmm. in the sheriff's deputy car. And uh, it was definitely kept my neighbors looking, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that's how it all started for me. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, then have you ever had to put safety net into action? I have not. Um, I've been fortunate enough, I know. <laughs> Very fortunate mm. enough because when that did happen to her, um, we of course took other precautions and things that we needed to do to keep her safe. Uh, one of them being an alarm in the house. Also, uh, for me, um, it helps me to sleep better at night knowing that she has that because if God forbid anything did happen and she got out, we also camp. So uh, when I do leave her in the arcade or we go to the store, and I let her have some space. 
um, it just makes me more comfortable knowing that because you never know if someone mm -hmm. sees her and knows that she's special needs. It could take her. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that just makes me feel a lot better. So I've always been very fortunate. Great. And Ralph, who would benefit from Safety Net? Anybody with a cognitive issue. Uh, anyone that it could be Alzheimer's, dementia, autism, traumatic brain injury, uh, anyone that uh, may wander off and get lost. Um, and <clears throat> it's like I said, um, there's been there's over a thousand calls. I found out about it when I was still in Marshfield and we brought it to town. And just, just Marshfield alone, there's been five search and rescues for men with Alzheimer's. And everyone, the longest search took 20 minutes. And can you please show us a, um, one of the devices that you brought? Sure, yeah. Um, this, is, this is the transmitter itself. That's, it's very small, half the size of a golf ball, weighs about an ounce. Uh, and it's waterproof. And there's a back that, goes, that would go on it. So the batteries that come um, with this, this whole kit, there's two batteries, which is a year's supply. The batteries last six months. So the uh, caregiver would take the battery, uh, put it inside the transmitter, put the back on, uh, and then there's 12 straps that we give with it. So they don't, it only has to be changed twice a year, but we give 12 straps because when somebody may have to go to the hospital for some kind of a scan, we ask them to, you know, take, cut it off, take this at home, because mm. they're going to be, you know, uh, under the care of uh, medical people. Um, because this will interfere with the uh, scans at the hospital. Okay. And there's been a couple of times where people forgot to do that, got to the hospital, <laughs> the medical people go, oh, what's this thing, clip, throw it in the trash. Um, so, you know, we, we ask the caregivers that, you know, no matter what, and especially with kids, you know, they may get it dirty or, or, or whatnot. So we ask, you know, that that's why we get uh, 12 that's traps to go with it. Yeah. There's also a tester that comes with it. And once the battery is inside, we ask the caregiver to take the tester and touch it to the transmitter, and a little red light will blink. And that means that it's, it's operational, mm -hmm. it's working. And then also with this comes a key um, that will, you can cl to close the back nice and tight so that it doesn't leak water. And then also there's four um, wallet cards. And on the wallet card, we have the caregiver put the uh, transmitter frequency and the ID of this particular transmitter and then give these to maybe the school bus driver mm -hmm. or if it's a uh, senior and they take the you know the senior bus to the senior center and home again then that bus driver gets it if it's the school the kids in the school the school teachers get one so everybody that has contact with that person absolute knows what their frequency and ID is and there's also a uh, refrigerator magnet that we suggest the same thing put it on at the home with the frequency and ID so if uh, the the adults want to go out for an evening but they're not you know should they you know whoever's watching their their child um, th let them know that if something happens 911 to the police and let them know that this is the frequency and ID of the child that's missing uh, or the or the adult, mm -hmm. and there's also a, um, a brochure here that explains exactly how to put this on, uh, and there's also on the website under the caregiver tab, there's a video to show people mm -hmm. how to actually do yeah. this. It seems fairly easy. And stuff. It is. It's, it's just, really yeah. easy. For I've anybody actually had to do that. Adrian was in the hospital for sick oh. Yeah. And I brought the extra straps, like you said, yeah. Yeah. because they will take it off. But yeah. They actually didn't this time, so oh, we're very good. lucky because it wasn't anything major. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and I'm okay. going to need some of those cats too. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> so how exactly does safety net work? I mean, you told us how, you know, um, about one of the devices, but I say, you know, uh, um, my grandmother, you know, goes missing. So what would be Oh, how law, law enforcement would, or, yeah. or public say, okay, so somebody goes missing. We tell the caregiver, don't spend two seconds looking for them. 911 first. 911 to get the law enforcement agency coming. Uh, and then ask them to call us next. 
Um, but usually that doesn't happen because it's such a panic that you know people call 911 and then they go looking for the person. Mm -hmm. um, and when we say call 911, let them know this person is on the safety net program and their frequency is 216123 and the ID is 4. Uh, so the people that are trained know what to do. So they take their receiver, plug that person's frequency into the receiver from the police station um, or fire department. And they, there's two antennas. There's one that goes on top of a vehicle, and they would hook it to that and start heading to where the person was last seen, be it the school or church or the house or wherever. Um, and then once they pick up the signal with that, they know they are within a quarter of a mile of that person. So they stop, switch over to a handheld antenna, and they're taught how to adjust the receiver. So within seconds, you get a pinpoint direction as to where this person is. And what that does is it immediately eliminates 364 degrees of a search area. Because when somebody's missing, either like I said, from a school or a house or a mall or wherever, the first question is, which way did they go? And the answer is, nobody knows. So, you know, everybody just spread out and, you know, go in all different directions. But with the safety net program, within seconds, this antenna tells you the person's over there. And then <clears throat> once you um, start heading toward where the person is, the, uh, that what we call a search corridor starts to widen out. So these officers are trained and, and firefighters are how to use the equipment to keep that search direction pinpoint to where the person is. Okay, great. And what are the features and benefits of safety net? Well, the features and benefit are, are really, um, like I mentioned earlier, about the, as opposed to GPS or cell, um, you're not going to lose the signal. It's the same type of signal that police radios operate on uh, and firefighters' radios operate on. So when they're inside a building, in the basement of a building, um, they're, they're you know, still picking up their reports or they're able to call out because it's what they call RF, radio frequency. Okay. And Scooby, I'm going to switch back. Can your daughter take a shower with this on? Absolutely. It's 100% waterproof. It never comes okay. off of her. And she actually tests it every day herself. Good for her. Oh, good for good her. Good job, yes, Adrian. Does. Yeah. So she doesn't, I mean, it's just a natural and, thing and for her. And if you try to take it off, or she doesn't want it off, <laughs> when we do the change of the battery, she makes sure that we're putting it right back on. Oh, wow. Yeah, she, she knows. That's cool. Good. Okay. So smart. And so my next question was, is your daughter okay wearing it? So obviously Absolutely. She, she is. She yeah. really is. Makes so. me feel good, too. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, Ralph, can you please um, share any success stories that you have heard of from people wearing it? Well, yeah, you got a couple of hours. <laughs> but uh, I'll just say one of the most recent ones yeah. was, was um, it, it was in uh, January. It was in Chelmsford. Uh, there was a woman that lived in an assisted living facility, uh, and sh the Chelmsford PD is trained with trained with this, and they actually bought transmitters and gave them to people in the community, uh, and this woman happened to have one on. So they were transitioning her from assisted living to a memory care, moving all of her things, um, and all of a sudden she disappeared. So they searched for her for almost an hour, couldn't find her. And then finally they called 911, and a Chelmsford police officer showed up to take the initial report, like we always, you know, you know, what's her name, how tall is she, what is she wearing, Can she, does she, is she verbal, you know, all of this information. And while he was taking the information, somebody mentioned, well, can't you find her on that bracelet? So the officer goes, what bracelet? <laughs> and, she, and they finally said, she's on the safety net bracelet. Well, he happened to have the tra safety net equipment in his cruiser because he's, oh, he's a canine wow. officer and, you know, he right. takes his car home with him. Right. So he, and, and dispatch had already activated um, uh, NEMLEC, which is 35 police departments up here in the northeast and part, northwestern part of the, uh, the state probably five or six officers of, of, on each department. So you're talking 50 or 60 off-duty officers are put on alert. They contacted the Mass State Police helicopter 
to get on this search. So you're talking about tens of thousands of dollars in mm -hmm. cost for, the, for a search. Then the officer finds out she's on the safety net program. He calls dispatch and says, cancel all the other, you know, the, all of those resources. And he calls another officer on because they had two sets of equipment. So now the question is, which way did she go? The answer is nobody knows. So Officer Leo tells Officer Brady, you go that way, I'll go this way. In 10 minutes, they found her hiding in the back seat of a parked car behind an apartment complex a quarter of a mile away. Mm. Wow. 10 minutes. That's unbelievable. So okay. that's, that's how how accurate this this system is as far as locating people on yeah. it. Because she wasn't out in the open, she was hiding. No, yeah, yeah. they're usually always two miles within their homes. And, you know, I mean, a lot of these searches that they're yeah. really close, like five miles at, at top. Right, yeah, and, and the, the, the good, well, sh when she took off, again, it was February, it was afternoon, temperatures were in the 30s, and she was she just had a blouse and, uh, and slacks on. Mm. So had they not been able to find her hiding in the back seat of that car, you don't know. Mm. No. Mm. You know, and that's one story times over a thousand. That's amazing. Similar stories with yeah. adults. Yeah. You also travel all over the place too, don't you? You go to different states. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to, um, uh, the end of this month, I'm going to Florida to train the uh, Manatee County Sheriff's Department. Mm -hmm. And then I believe the beginning of next month to uh, Ardmore, Oklahoma to train the police department. Mm -hmm. Chelsea Fire Department is coming great. on in, uh, in February, I believe. Um, That's great. So there's, uh, it's, it's, you know, it, Getting more it's, out moving, there. it's moving along really nicely. That's great, great. And who can be a member of the safety net program? Uh, yeah, as far as agencies go, <clears throat> any agency, any department, uh, be it police or fire or sheriff's department, um, can contact us to to um, train them with equipment and how to use the how to use the equipment. Uh, just for an example, uh, Chelsea Fire. Uh, yeah, I think it was about uh, maybe a couple of months ago. There was a um, a young boy missing with autism. And uh, they searched for quite a while, to, um, several hours, looking for him out of Chelsea. Mm -hmm. And they found him, I think it was in Cambridge. I remember this. He was riding the train. No, the that's a different guy. Oh. That's a different guy. Oh. This, this, this boy uh, was found. Somebody noticed him at a, uh, a municipal pool area in oh, Cambridge. Boy. And they said, you know, this doesn't look right. He, he this doesn't appear to be anybody with him. So they called the, the police. It turns out that's the kid that was missing from, from Chelsea. Chelsea. So I found out about it, contacted the Chelsea Fire Department, and they uh, was like, no question, we need to have this in our town. So they have um, found uh, support and finances uh, to get trained, equipped, and to purchase a number of tracking devices that they also want to just give to families uh, in Chelsea that are in need. Cool. And Great. what equipment is authorized to be used in the safety net program? Uh, we have specific tracking equipment uh, that that o that only our equipment can find this this uh, these tracking devices. And like I said, the uh, the officers uh, and firefighters are trained. It's a, it's a full day training class. And <clears throat> what we do is a lot of it, the first part of the training class mm -hmm. is uh, teaching and re talking about people with Alzheimer's, kids with autism, what to do, what not to do, how to recognize uh, somebody if somebody's nonverbal, you know, how to maybe, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, communicate with them. And then the second part of the, the class is I take these transmitters, was, like I said, is half the size of a golf ball, and I go out and hide them somewhere. And I just tell them what the frequency is and go find it. And they, every single time, they're looking for something this big as opposed to a person. And every single time, within minutes, they find them. Uh, and then I also want to talk about um, what we call is a reverse save, where a lot of them, um, we've had many of them around the country um, that 
a person was missing on the safety net program, but they weren't reported missing. Nobody, you know, the caregivers didn't know that they were missing. And we've had, there was a um, Brookline police officer, uh, was, uh, this was a few, few months ago, was driving around and saw, now this was in July, I believe, and there was a gentleman walking down the street. He had a winter parka on, one of those big woolly hats mm -hmm. with the earmuffs. Um, I, I think ski mobile like tig, you know, pants, July, and being trained observers that we are, mm -hmm. that didn't look quite <laughs> right. No. So he stopped, you know, get out, hi, how are you? What's your name? Guy was nonverbal, couldn't speak. Mm -hmm. You know, can I take you somewhere? He couldn't get any information. But the officer noticed that this guy had a tracking bracelet on. So he takes out his trusty buck knife, cuts the strap off, uh, takes out a nickel, does the back, pulls the battery out, and inside is the frequency and ID. So he calls dispatch. They go on our database and plug in frequency 216-123. That's Mr. Jones, he's 86 years old, he's nonverbal, he lives in a secure facility down on 123 Main Street. Um, so the officer, you know, puts him in the car, that. drives him back to the facility. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, and we've had a number of those happen around the country where people were found but weren't reported. Have they always done that? Yeah. Really? Yep. I didn't even know that. Yeah, if you open, <laughs> well, if you open Adrian's thing. No, I, I have, yeah, battery, but I've never inside noticed that inside. Inside is the frequency and ID. Wow. Cool, cool. And how would someone get it, the safety net into their local agencies? Uh, they get into their agencies? Well, they would have to contact their local agency and, and you know, mention it to them that, you know, this is available. And then that agency would contact us. Okay. And then we could, you know, go on as to, you know, how much it's going to cost, how long is it going to take, uh, is there any funding, uh, which there has been a lot of funding around the, uh, around the state, especially this state. Um, we have uh, agencies have uh, been, been able to get uh, funding through the Department of Justice or uh, Homeland Security um, for tracking equipment and training and purchasing transmitters to give to people. Mm -hmm. uh, Boston Police Department for the last three years has received uh, DOJ uh, funding and anybody in the city of Boston that has somebody that is, that is at risk of wandering off the Boston police will pay for it, as well as Framingham police. Amazing. Um, there's, 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 there's several, like my town, Marshfield. When I found out about it, we you know, presented it to the Elks, Kiwanis, Masons. Uh, and back then, uh, the police department really didn't have the funding back in um, uh, 2010 uh, to, to buy this equipment and for the training. And these organizations donated the money. Uh, to do mm -hmm. that. And then since then, there has been money that is donated to the Marshfield Police. And anybody in Marshfield that has somebody that wants to go on the program, the Marshfield Police pay for it. Awesome. Yeah. That's great. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, Ralph, if anyone has any questions, can you please give us your contact info? Yeah, sure. The, the, uh, the website is um, safetynettracking.com, and our uh, customer service number is 508. 530-1595. And anybody that would want uh, somebody in their family to go on this program, they can call customer service, let them know what town they live in, uh, and they can let them know whether or not uh, Safety Net is, is trained, uh, that particular town is trained. But anybody in the, in the state of Massachusetts can go on this program, whether the PD is trained or not, because of the state police. Okay. All right, great. I'm sorry, but that's all the time that we have. Thank you both for all you do for those in need. I'd love to hear your thoughts and suggestions. Please send them to lifeissuestv at gmail.com. And remember, live each day to the fullest and celebrate life. Mm -hmm.